Hi, welcome to the first of a series of demonstrations designed to introduce InfoPath 2007. In this demo, I'm going to show you an example of a form I've created to give you an idea of some of the rich functionality offered by InfoPath and how it could be useful. This is by no means a full showcase of InfoPath's functions. It's just to give you a taster. My demo form is an expenses form, since this is something in common to a lot of uh, companies. I'm opening up a blank form. Notice this warning. Apparently the form is using my identity to retrieve information. If I click yes, you'll see why. Notice that some of these fields are filled in. InfoPath knows my username and is using that to reference a database. In this case, it's a database I've created with some fake data for the sake of this demo. InfoPath could link to an SQL database, an access database, a SharePoint list, or a web service. It fills in the fields with the appropriate data, which means it will take me less time to fill out the form. If I'd click No on the warning window when I opened the form, the data wouldn't have been retrieved and I would have been able to enter details in these fields manually. Also notice this date field. This is automatically populated with today's date. This is done with a built-in function that came with InfoPath. Now we'll get on to entering the expenses information. Let's enter an item, say train tickets. Now I need to set a date for this. The date picker makes it easier to choose the correct value if you, like me, struggle to remember the date. All I need to know is that I travelled on a Wednesday. Oops, I've clicked the wrong Wednesday. I have chosen a date in the future. I'm given a warning because the data is only valid if it's for an expense in the event in the past. So I'll click OK on that and change this to the correct date. I'll enter the price of the tickets and the amount. Notice this last column. InfoPath is doing the arithmetic for me. This makes the process a lot quicker and means that there are less time-consuming corrections needed if someone makes a mistake in their adding. It looks like there's only one row to enter expenses. Does this mean I can only claim back one item at a time? Not at all. If I click here, I get another row. I can do this as many times as I need. Have you ever filled out a form with, say, 10 rows, only you've had 11 items to put in there? You have to fill out a whole other form for that one extra item. Not anymore. You can have as many rows as you need without the form looking ridiculously long if most people only need a small amount. Let's go down to the next section of the form. Do I want to expense an event? I'll click yes. And a new section appears. In this section, it assumes that events tend to have similar costs associated with them, so these are grouped into one area. But until I say I want to enter details for an event, this section is hidden. This prevents confusion if it's irrelevant. I filled out forms in the past that include instructions on which question to go to next, depending on the answers. If yes, go to question 3. If no, skip to question 4. If the form's long and includes lots of instructions like that, it can be difficult to be sure you filled out all the relevant parts. Conditional formatting makes it easy to hide or show sections of the form based on responses, meaning that users see exactly those parts of the form that are relevant to them. Now I'll fill in the details for an event. You'll notice that the form is doing some of the arithmetic for me again. But what if I want to claim expenses for more than one event? As with the table, I just click this button and I have another area appear. I get exactly the right number of these sections. Now I'll choose someone to approve. Note that the form gives me a list of names. This list is taken from the same SharePoint list as the information at the top of the form. 
The form looks at this database, sees who my manager is, who my manager's manager is, and so on. If someone else opens this form, they will see a different list based on their details in the database. This means that if there's a change, if someone moves role or leaves the company, the database will be updated and the change is reflected in the form automatically. I don't have to worry about updating every single form that uses this information. Now I'll click Submit. With any luck, I'll see a message telling me that the demo is working correctly. And it is. This form is set to close automatically when I finish with it. It can also be set to keep the form open or to open a new blank form. Now I'll go to a SharePoint form library. And if I click refresh, there's a new form arrived. When I submitted the form, I didn't have to enter the location of the library, say who or where to send the form to. It was all done automatically. InfoPath sent the completed form to the appropriate location without any user input. Also notice the name. InfoPath has named the form using data from the fields, my surname and the date that the form was filled out on. This allows uniform naming procedures without all the users having to remember exactly how to name the forms. I hope this demonstration was useful to you and gave you an idea of the powerful forms that can be created using InfoPath. Join me for the second part of this series where I'll show you how easy it is to make forms in InfoPath without any need for code.